So this video is about static stretching, which is when you hold a stretch on and you hold it for a certain period of time, as opposed to dynamic stretching, which is where you move it to the end of the range and off and end of range and off. Now, it's been said for quite some time because there's been research showing this, that static stretching uh, decreases uh, power of the muscle, the, the uh, peak torque that it can produce. The, you know, so therefore anything that's to do with power, strength, explosive movements, it's gonna reduce it. But they found in the study previously uh, that it was not a long-standing issue. So if you do your static stretching, 15 minutes after that stretch, your power returns back to normal levels. So generally, if you use stretching as part of your overall training regime, but not necessarily just pre-exercise or pre-explosive uh, sport, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, but what's very interesting is there was another piece of research done recently, which looked at doing stretching statically, comparing it to dynamic stretching. What they did is they did uh, three sets of 30 second hold static stretches, and they were looking at three measures of power. One was eccentric peak torque, one was a modified 20 meter sprint, and one was a triple hop test. So looking for explosive power and measuring that. And what they did is they, they basically got them to do these stretches in this way. Um, they did it three times a week, and they basically did it over 10 sessions. So it was about three and a bit weeks worth of static stretching. Then they obviously measured the beginning before they did any of the stretching with these tests, these measures, and did them 48 hours after they completed all of the stretching. So as in, you know, after the 10 sessions. And they found that it was reduced. All measures were reduced. Whereas the dynamic stretching group had no reduction in the power outputs. So this is quite interesting when it comes to measuring uh, or using static stretching as a means of part of the training protocol. Now it doesn't mean static stretching shouldn't be used or is a bad idea necessarily, but it should be used in caution depending on the reasons behind it. So for example, if someone has got restrictive tissue, the length of say their hamstrings is short, that means that they are more likely to induce an injury from that. So therefore they need to lengthen that. So static stretching could be the way they go about that. Then we have found though doing eccentric loading also lengthens tissue as well. So we could go at it a different way, but there's debate over which is more effective. Whereas if someone's using static stretching to get rid of the effect of delayed onset muscle soreness, then they might be better off doing something different. And certainly we've known this for a while, if using it as part of a warm up, that's probably not even gonna warm you up and therefore is gonna be detrimental to power as the previous research has shown and certainly now based on this stuff. So therefore dynamic stretching is the way to go. So it's not a nail in the coffin for static stretching, but it's certainly another thing showing static stretching if you're a power sport related kind of thing, or you're about to do some explosive kind of weightlifting or whatever, static stretching uh, may not be a good idea before it, uh, and it may not be a good idea generally unless you need it for a particular purpose. Uh, and then you've got to look at it uh, as, as being sort of, you know, the choice behind why you're doing something for what rationale. So it's another interesting one though. It was something which has kind of changed things a little bit on the previous research finding, thinking it was only a transient effect, but it looks to be more of an effect that continues onwards uh, and way after the stretches have been done. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.